you an example of a function that's very rarely differentiable, and that is the conjugate of z squared. So I'm going to use the definition of differentiability here, and if you plug it in, you see that you get this. But I'm going to, for my, for my convenience, I'm going to think of this as maybe z naught is right here, right? Z is getting close to, to, to z naught. So I'm going to maybe say z is right there. For my convenience, I'm going to define kind of this distance here. I'll just go transport it to the origin, and I get a point here. And I'm going to call this, using polar coordinates, r e to the i about theta for this. And so you can see here that the length of this is r, and here's the angle theta. So the difference between them, I'm just going to write in polar coordinates. Why am I going to do that? Because I'm going to square things, and polar coordinates work really well when you square things. In fact, well, and so this comes down to, right, how, how, do, how does z get close to z naught? Well, r has to go to zero. The length has to go to zero. So I can make this r goes to zero of um, z naught plus r e to the i theta squared conjugate minus z naught conjugate squared all over z minus z naught. And this is equal to the limit as r goes to zero. I'll put dot, 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 because there's a lot of calculations here. But you can do the calculations, which equals 2 conjugate of z naught e to the negative 2i theta uh, plus r e to the negative 3i theta. And as r goes to 0, it doesn't matter what theta does. This whole thing is going to go to 0. So I just end up with 2z naught e to the negative 2i theta. Regardless, there's no r in here. So this is what the limit is. Now, keep in mind that the theta is still in here, though. So there's no r, but there is a theta, which means that, so e to the negative 2i theta is going to take on different values according to what theta is, right? If, uh, if theta equals, I don't know, pi over 3, you're going to get uh, something that looks like this, where this is 1. If theta equals negative 3 pi over 4, you're going to get something that looks like this, where this is still 1. So this value is going to change according to what theta is, unless z naught equals 0. Um, so uh, this uh, changes according to theta. In other words, you're going to get different values for the derivative if you approach from up here versus approach from there versus approach from there, unless you can get rid of that theta somehow. And a good way to do that is by letting z naught equal to 0. So the conclusion, so f of z equals z conjugate squared is only differentiable at z equals 0. In other words, it can't be holomorphic anywhere because there's only one point where it's where it's differentiable. So I'm going to pause this for a second. I'm going to show you, show you an alternate way. Wait with me one second. I changed my mind. Uh, so I, I want to use my last minute to, to tell you kind of the, the basic strategy that we took. Right? Z is going to go to Z naught. It was convenient for us to write, to write Z as just Z naught plus a little bit more. And we'll write the little bit more as polar. This is going to be a thing where you use polar or rectangular according to whatever is convenient for you. And then what happens is that we're able to get rid of the r um, by letting it go to 0, and then the theta comes in. And this theta really tells us about the direction. From what angle are we approaching 0? And we're going to get different values according to, according to what direction we take, which means that uh, just like in calculus, when the derivative from the left didn't equal the derivative from the right, it wasn't differentiable. Here we have an infinite number of directions, and they're all getting given different values unless the c naught is equal to 0, wiping out the effect of the different directions. Thank you.